All right, welcome back. Very cool. Let's keep going with this uh, Data Bender mini tutorial series. If you didn't watch the first few videos, then I do encourage you to go back and uh, check them out just in case you missed something. And of course, if you ever wanted to learn more about synthesizers, Eurorack, or just electronic music production in general, then uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss anything. So let's bring up the uh, manual on the screen and here we go right on the uh, macro mode. And I'm gonna get the uh, music going. Okay, so I reset the data bender. So currently everything is uh, turned off. No modulation is going on. We are at about, I'll say 70% wet and we are receiving the uh, project tempo as a uh, external clock, which currently is uh, 72 BPM. So let's start reading macro mode. Macro mode is a set of three controls that have automated parameters based on the clock settings. So it's basically set the knobs where you like and let the data bender do its job of bending shit. Okay, so the macro mode is represented with a uh, blue LED and the micro mode would be the uh, green LED, which we'll look into very soon. So let's stick with the uh, macro mode. Uh, okay, so like I said before, the uh, two parameters that are affected by which mode the uh, data bender happens to be in are the uh, bend and break modes. So the uh, corrupt is, is always the same regardless of the mode. Uh, mode. Um, and again, the freeze, it's a completely different function, so it definitely is not affected by uh, the uh, mode selection. So right now we are in uh, macro mode and let's look at the uh, band parameter and it wouldn't hurt if I turn it on. So with this control you can experience the following effects. Very speed pitch changes, reversed audio playback and uh, vinyl clicks and pops and tape stop. So let's listen to this for a moment. This is very musical. This mode is super musical. And of course the data bender has its dark side where you can use it just to mangle audio to oblivion. But this mode is very musical. So we can enable and disable bend by using its corresponding button. So we're off and back on. When enabled, which is represented by the blue LED. Every clock division, a certain manipulation of the playback speed and direction can occur. So basically every time the clock cycles, whether that's an internal or external clock, it will sort of re-mangle the whole situation and, uh, and start playing a different sound. When the knob is all the way down, the effect is disabled. So that's equivalent of having it turned off. <clears throat> at the lowest settings, it will only have a slight chance to reverse the audio at the normal playback speed. And of course, another thing that I want to point out, which um, I haven't read about it in the manual yet, I'm not sure if it's there. So let me turn it all the way down and look at the uh, sound field monitor on the left right now. So this is mono. This is basically the unaffected signal, even though we are at 60-70% uh, dry wet. As soon as I dial in some of this band parameter, look what happens to the sound. So the data bender is gonna start throwing sound all over the stereo field, which sounds really, really, really amazing. At the maximum settings, it can play back the audio forward or backward at various intervals and will begin to introduce a slew to the changes in playback speeds. So let's sweep from zero to all the way up. Here we go. And 
keep in mind repeat is not enabled right now. So we're at about 50% right now. And you see how those changes are following the clock rate? About 60%. At about 75, it really starts going to work. So this is where it starts introducing a slew to the uh, changes in playback speeds. Still very musical though. Now let's go all the way up. So off. Back on. Still very musical, even all the way at the top. Okay, let's stick here with the band. Let's go up to about 75% and let's try, let's start adding some repeats. See what happens. Okay, now let's go full wet and let's play around with the uh, uh, time parameter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take it out of external clock. So remember on the bottom, this is a 16 second buffer. And we're listening to the full wet sound right now. So now we are getting into where the fuck am I territory. And remember, all the way up to the top, it's 80 cycles, 80 hertz. 
So 188 of the second um, is the uh, length of the buffer, which is fast. Let's turn down the effect a little bit. sound and back to external clock mode wait for it to pick it up and there it is so if you want a more cohesive more uh, sort of in time if you will um, effect data bending then uh, external clock is the way to go if you just want to go more experimental more crazy then just Use the internal clock and just go nuts with it.